Before we start looking at how to operate a Linux system, let's go briefly over the history and some important terms that you might come into contact with so you know what they mean. The history of Linux really begins with its predecessor. The predecessor was called Unix. Unix was an operating system that has been around since the 70s. Unix was written in the C programming language. Unix had already predecessors, so the idea of an operating system goes back even further. And over time, there have been many different Unix variants. Most IT companies that you've heard of, Microsoft, Hewlett Packard, have had their own Unix system. Some variations of Unix have been around until today. For example, Mac OS is a derivative of a derivative of Unix. The next important thing was the POSIX standard. The POSIX standard came out in 1990 and it standardized the interface which all Unix systems had to implement. So every standard conforming Unix system and that includes Linux, which is almost completely POSIX compliant, have the same interface and a lot of the commands that you will see in this course are defined in the POSIX standard. The things we are covering in this course are mostly covered by the POSIX standard, so they should be available in all Linux systems. What we think of as Linux is really a collection of different components. The word Linux, strictly speaking, refers only to what's called the kernel. The kernel is the absolute basic core part of the operating system. Another key component are the GNU utilities. The GNU utilities are a bunch of commands and other components that are built on top of the kernel. And they are technically separate from it and are as important to Linux as the kernel itself. In fact, a lot of people are saying the term Linux is unfair. It should be called GNU Linux because those are both equally important components. Nowadays, when you install Linux, what you're actually doing is you install one of several distributions or distros. A distro is a collection of a specific version of the kernel, specific version of these GNU tools, and everything else on top of that. For example, everything that has to do with graphical user interfaces like the desktop environment is not part of GNU or Linux but it's distributed as part of a collection that includes all these tools. Here are a couple common Linux distributions that you might run into. There are of course many, many others, but these are really the most popular ones. Most of these have a specific purpose and are sort of geared towards that purpose in some ways. A Linux distribution that you'll often see for servers, and that includes compute clusters, is Red Hat Enterprise Linux or a derivation thereof. Red Hat Linux is distributed by a company that's also called Red Hat and Red Hat Enterprise Linux is geared towards high reliability. So there are fewer features and components to it, but it has increased uh, stability. The company Red Hat also distributes another system, it's called Fedora, and Fedora is sort of the desktop counterpart to the server Red Hat Enterprise Linux. For example, if you're a de developer who develops for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you can use Fedora to test things. Additionally, there's CentOS, which is a what's called a fork of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, meaning they took Red Hat Enterprise Linux, changed some things around, and CentOS, unlike Red Hat, is maintained by a community. Our cluster at Unisigen, which I'll be using for the examples throughout this tutorial, and uh, several other compute clusters run on CentOS. In the desktop sector, the most common distribution that you are likely to run into is Ubuntu. Ubuntu is also distributed by a company that's called Canonical. Ubuntu ha also has a sort of community fork that's called Linux Mint. It's also very popular. And they are both are part of a family of Linux system that's called the Debian family. Debian Linux is another one from that family. And they are sort of a different branch on that tree of Linux systems than Red Hat, the Red Hat family. A Linux distribution that you will often see, especially in Germany, is called SUSE. SUSE is distributed by a German company that's also called SUSE, and it's sort of geared towards workplace PCs, office PCs, and stuff like that. There's also a server version. 
Occasionally, you will see a scientific compute cluster that runs the server version of SUSE Linux. And then there are various other Linux distributions that are geared towards a specific purpose. Just one example I'm going to name is called Kali Linux. Kali Linux is geared towards uh, hackers, really, or security testers. One of the features that Kali Linux can do is it can run without being installed on the computer. You simply have a USB stick that you put in and you can boot Kali Linux as it is from that USB stick and it only lives in the RAM of the computer. Several Linux distributions can do that. Kali Linux is specialized towards that because it's specialized for security testers. So how popular is Linux? It absolutely depends on what type of computer you're looking at. If you're looking at a supercomputer, um, a cluster like it's used for scientific compute purposes, Linux is everywhere. In 2018 was the first time when out of the top 500 fastest supercomputers in the world, all 500 were running Linux. Before that, there were a couple that were still using different Unix variants. If you look at the web servers that run most websites, 95% of those are running some sort of Linux. Interestingly, mobile devices, most of those run Android, which uses the Linux kernel. The other popular mobile operating system is iOS, and iOS is a Unix variant because it's a variant of Mac OS, and that in turn is a variant of Unix. For desktop PCs, it looks a little different. It's probably not a surprise to you that most of those are Windows PCs, which has nothing to do with the whole Unix and Linux sphere. There are very few good figures on how many desktop PCs run Linux, but its estimate is like 1% or 2%. And among those, the most popular distributions seem to be Ubuntu and Linux Mint. Again, it's surprisingly hard to come by good figures here. So these are some of the most important terms to do with the background of Linux that you should have heard of. 